I don't start a lot of Twitter beef, but the but the few people who I always go after are the neo are the neo rationalists because they have they have uh, because what they is neo rationalism? Very... Do not dumb it down for me. I'll fucking kill you. Know? <laughs> I mean, it's it's basically. It's, 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 it. Oh, what, what were you gonna say? Zero. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say that if if Gio hadn't. Don't dumb it down for us. We'll okay, you. don't don't dumb it down. Uh, it's uh, I would say it's an evolution of I would say, if I were to be honest, I would say it's sort of a ham-fisted suturing of the analytic philosophy tradition of people like Carnap and philosophy and science like Robert Brandom and Wilfred Sellers, who, in my opinion, is just total nonsense. Oh God! Uh, as w- with yeah. the kind of um, post delusian uh, I guess you would say school of speculative realism, which is a kind of post Kantian uh, form of theory in, in many ways that was also uh, refuted and destroyed by um, Catherine Malibu, who I think is really amazing. So, so basically what you have is you have this middle ground of people and they're not like, they're not rigorous to rigorous enough to be true lapdogs for the hard sciences, but they're not like quirky and kooky enough to be like Nick land and take things to their totally anti, because they're still shot. They're still working within the framework of reason as central and contingent within the human. So, Mm -hmm. so it's, it's still working within the contingency of local human intelligence. And basically what land has said in his, in his, uh, in his crypto, post it was a blog post but it was you could you could almost read it like a short book is that essentially the trans transcendental intelligence no longer is is central in, to the agent it's no mm. longer it's mm-hmm. basically taken mm. itself because the thing about blockchain governance is that it has its own system of truth procedure that has nothing to do with dialectics dialectics is rooted within human reason i mean Everyone from Hegel talks about intelligence being something that is only imbued through through sociality, through right. through through a sort of like collective uh, mirroring or reframing of uh, society. But well, even there up to are Heidegger other, that, but, but, yeah. yeah. Say, well, well, Heidegger would differ because Heidegger is very much into same with Bernard Stiegler when he talks about individuation. Like when you're when you're when with Heidegger and Stiegler and to an extent Derrida with language you're existing in a world that is already made for you. Right. Like, right. Neo, the problem with neo-rationalism is it's so concerned about what one must do, but it has zero qualification or interest in what happens to one, what, what one is exposed to that is already transcendental within the world. So and, in other words, they're, they're too like rationalistic or nerdish to fully embrace like the Mila So like critique of correlation. Like they're still fundamentally... Yes. So it's like they play around with object oriented ontology and and like speculative realism, but they don't. Well, they're they're, they're still almost, Kantian in some ways, right? Like the, well, the, well, they're more Hegelian, and this is the issue oh, okay. that I. This is the biggest thing that I that I take away is that they they still consider because a lot of it comes with the the picture of flow time because they're very into Ludwig Boltzmann and Ludwig Boltzmann came up you know Boltzmann's brain theory which is basically that flow time is something that we experience linearly you know like we experience days days turns into weeks weeks turns into years and so on and so forth but what they're basically positing or saying is that no we have no way of quantifying flow time which is true we do not but other forms of intelligence that lack sapience cannot tell the difference. They don't give a fuck whether time is flow time, if it goes backwards. The, the blockchain does not care. It's embedded logic and truth procedure in rooting out things like um, fraud, in doing things like solving complex equations in order to mine. They do not care about th- this dialectic notion or interest in time. Like time is irrelevant to these things. So how can you, so this is my biggest issue. And I actually went on a huge thing. I went on Peter Wolfendale and Reza uh Twitter line. And I just kind of trashed them. I was like, so, you, so, so, so your entire um, theory is based on Boltzmann's theory of that we cannot qualify. So which picture of time can you actually make a case for? I got no response. And then I said, well, look, um, if you can't give me a response, 
then I will tell you this also, and this is what Land actually said in his disintegration essay, is basically, if you cannot qualify the, 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 the linearity of time, and you can't give an alternate to that, that doesn't even matter anyway, because, because anti-human intelligence exists in this world right now. It exists as we speak. And so when I think of cyberpunk, I don't think of like cyberpunk aesthetically. I think of like the Wall Street bets bros who are using non-sapient forms of intelligence to leveraging that to their advantage. They're actually taking the Promethean angle with intelligence that's not located in the human, which is essentially Lovecraftian. It has no none of the aesthetic uh, sensibilities at all with cyberpunk. But I almost see the GameStop bros, and that was something that I tweeted out, as a form of, like, finance punk is cyberpunk. That's Holy basically... Shit. The impersonal forces of technology. Like, I know it's a meme, and we've all seen, you know... Like you said in your podcast, you've seen The Matrix when we were 12 years old. So it's like the first immediate thing. But a deeper critique would be what happens when basically rationality is decoupled from like the human subject. Exactly. Right. So and even like you mentioned, like I mentioned, well, you you elaborated with Heidegger and Stiegler. I mean, th this is like basically the Agamben critique of Heidegger in the open. Like, oh, exactly. he doesn't include right. yeah. animals and other things. Mm -hmm. Well, what about Heidegger, like Heidegger 2.0? in like the world of AI and like these impersonal forces. But what happens when that AI, like we're seeing with the bandwave, right? What happens when there isn't sort of a- An alternative. An alternative, but also like a rationality that isn't designed to um, posit any sort of human flourishing or so forth, okay. or even just the- so, What a sapient, just so I understand discussion a little I bit mean, more. I mean, the, the way that it's, it's, well, obviously, you know, language has, I don't want to sound too, <laughs> postmodern here but obviously i think i think what most people think oh, of when ahead. they think of sapiens is wisdom and what is wisdom it's something that's located within the human it's it's local and contingent to the agent but what happens if agents are non-rational and this is actually goes back to what what geo was saying about heidegger 2.0 and and stiegler and agamben is that i think and this is another thing that people brought up, because one thing Stiegler talks about, he's like, the reason why I'm not a dialectician anymore, why I don't like dialectics, is it, it doesn't take entropy into account of anything. Mm. He's like, I'm not a Marxist anymore. I don't fucking care about any of that bullshit, because what I'm getting is a Nick, Nick Land meltdown vibe from that. Yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, and so I think I think the uh, a, I think the problem with the with a lot of these sort of like neo egalian people is that they tend to elide the the notion of intelligence with sociality and and then trying to paint a picture of time through that experience but in a sort of Kantian in almost like a Kantian way something that we cannot fully grasp or know mm -hmm. and and so it's it's this kind of muddled complexity and this is one of the things why i think game well well to get back to your point like when you talk about twitter bans right part of the reason why blockchain expanded recently why the, it went up is because they saw the dickheads at robin hood were like all right yeah we don't like the rules of this game because we're humans who have agency over these algorithmic technologies we'll just change the rules so that people don't win People already yeah. started to win, and when they started to win, you saw the Bitcoin market take off immediately after they had shut that shit down. But, now but, you notice, have... but notice the I, rationality. I think you may be giving them too much credit, though. The, the average Wall Street bits investor, especially the one that lost, that came to Robin Hood late in the game. I mean, they, uh, look, they just like the stock, man. They, oh, totally. Oh, I, yeah, they're I, not I interested in philosophy. I, they ate McDonald's. I, I don't think they're thinking to themselves, yeah. oh, the blockchain is going to be like something they can't cheat or fuck with. Honestly, they can. All they have to do is, is the same people who control the exchanges control the uh, the, the brokers. They control like, uh, but, you know, things like Especially like in regards to there. Ethereum. Sorry. Especially in regards to yeah, Ethereum. No, no, I, I, I do agree there. But notice the rationality, though. I don't mean to shill, but I came out with no. a video on it uh, <laughs> at the time of my YouTube, a Giant Art Productions. Giant Art Productions, YouTube.com slash Giant Art Productions. Um, Patreon forthcoming. 
Yeah, I was just, I came up with a video. It was coupled with like the Wall Street thing, but also with the Ricky Vaughn uh, legal situation. I think I think you were on the air at the time. I mentioned the first time ZHP. Um, look, notice the logic is totally driven not by the usual um, like the greed that motivates you know, global capital, like this is the best stock. It's motivated by millennial nostalgia, uh, Reddit hive mind, and a combination of the two, but also the aesthetic dimension of nostalgia now being commodified itself because yeah. now it's like this, you know, one of my favorite vaporwave images was the little girl in front of the nine, nine, um, 9-11 in front of the Twin Towers that said, you know, <laughs> I was born in a world that doesn't exist anymore. And as an older millennial, I was born into a world that pretty much doesn't exist anymore. So it's like that sort of, uh, I remember when my friends were around and we played video games and we went to fucking GameStop. And yeah. that is the logic that drives the meme market, literally meme market. And so maybe they won't, that is... They won't be able to do that again, though. Like, yeah, GameStop well. was a one-off. We found out if they had Battletoads. They didn't. And there's there's not going to be any more battle toads, Geo. Mm. <laughs> no oh, it, it would be pretty funny though. By the way, it would be pretty funny <laughs> if somebody erected. <laughs> if it, it would be funny if somebody erected a uh, defiant little girl statue in front of the 9/11 memorial, like the one with those uh, square <laughs> things. <laughs> that would say so much. I should actually paint. That's a good painting idea for me.